Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, if you're standing up, there's a bunch of empty seats, so you can come sit down. Uh, this is the first talk of uh, DebConf proper after Debian Day. Um, and uh, I actually think our first speaker doesn't need very much in the way of introduction. Um, Stefano Zaccheroli, the Debian project leader, is going to give us uh, bits from the DPL. Better? I hope the battery stays uh, with me. Okay, so thank you everybody for coming up this early in the morning. I'm glad that we did working still. Okay, I'm glad that we did manage to enter the auditorium. Um, so in this talk, I just want to make a kind of a health check of Debian after 17 year almost of its life. So, and it seems to be kind of a tradition to start the bits from the DPS talk looking, looking back looking at how all this started. So I went back and uh, reread for the nth time the message that Ian sent to um, a news group, something like uh, 17 years ago, and it was something like, uh, fellow Linuxer, this is just an announcement to announce the imminent completion, not that completion, of a brand new Linux release, which I'm calling the Debian Linux release. That was August seven, uh, 16th, 1993. And in that message, you can find something of the original goals of Debian, and which are kind of inspiring to look at. So back then, Ian was aiming at making GNU Linux competitive with the commercial operating system. Back then, it was kind of completely unknown to the great public, and so the first goal was to have that operating system be competitive. So it was inspired by a distribution quite popular back then called SLS, but the goal was to make it better, make it a distribution in which quality was really important. He, want to, he wanted to make Debian easy to install for any user. He wanted to build it in a collaborative manner in, in which all packages were managed by expert of the specific software which was being packaged and in, uh, with using an open model in which everything was done in the public. And also, more importantly, he wanted Debian to be free as in freedom. So back then, we, there, was, there were not many distribution. Kind of Debian was one of the sole one. Together with Red Hat, we started not far away. Um, and today, the situation has pretty much changed. So nowadays, Debian has something like 30,000 binary packages. If you look today in the IMD64 SID main, we have spawned something like 120 derivative distribution, which are distribution which are based on our packages. And we have released 11th time, and we are close to release for the 12th time. We are about uh, 1,000 packaging contributors of which 900 are developers and about 100 are Debian maintainers, plus thousands of other contributors of irrelevant work like translations, websites, and this kind of stuff. We are probably the, the among the biggest distribution, we are the one with the largest number of ports available, and we are gonna release two non-Linux ports for the first time with Squeeze. So I would say, well done. This is pretty impressive with respect to the original goal and with respect to how was the condition back then. However, I feel that when we talk with us and when we, um, when we think about Debian, we have some kind of bad feelings in some moments. So I feel that sometimes we have the feeling, and sometimes I also have the feeling, that there are now a lot other distribution. We are not alone anymore. Um, and we feel that some other distribution are releasing more frequently than us, and we feel a bit bad about that. We know that other distribution have more users than Debian has, and we feel a bit bad about that too. We feel that some other distribution are innovating more, that some other distribution are getting more credit, more press, more relevance, all in all, than, than Debian. So I ask myself, and, and I ask you, do you think Debian is better than other distribution? Why are you contributing to Debian in the first place? And even more so, do you think Debian is still relevant 17 years after its original creation? Do you think that the free software con ecosystem will miss something if Debian will disappear one day from another? So my answer to that, to both of them, is yes, absolutely. But I would like, before presenting my, I mean, the reasoning for my answer, I would like to know from you. So have you ever asked yourself this question? What is your answer to them? Why you think Debian is still relevant nowadays? I think that we have a microphone, so I would like to have some comment on that. Jonas. Uh, most certainly yes. And the That's the easy part. That it was written there. <laughs> <laughs> should I reason it or should I? Uh, no, why, why you think it is the case? Yes. 
because the the uh, the uh, resolving above is is flawed, we have the most users because we have distribution users. Okay, fair enough. And uh, and, uh, and similar with uh, some of the others, mine, we don't release less frequently. We release four times a day. So you are saying basically that De Debian. <laughs> So you're saying that Debian is relevant because it's the basis for several other distribution out there. That's, you, that's your argument. Yeah. And anything else? Phil? I'm kind of scared of what Phil gonna say, but. <laughs> Hi there. Yes, okay. Um, I've always thought that Debian is relevant because it does what I want. <laughs> it does what, sorry? Uh, it does what I want. And there are about a thousand people who think that it does what they want enough to work on it, and even if the rest of the world goes somewhere else, there, there'll still be a thousand people that you'd have to kill to stop working on Debian. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Russ? Yeah, I, I think it's it's extremely relevant because it is it still follows that model wherein experts maintain packages of the software that they know, and when we were looking for a distribution uh, to use at Stanford, we were looking for some place not something not that we were going to consume but something where when we came up with things at Stanford that we needed, we would be able to get them back into the distribution and then they would have the benefit of being part of the distribution and not some add-on that we have to maintain independently. Absolutely. Sam? So, um, for me, Debian is a great distribution because it's something that I can choose to contribute to. I know that um, there's a community aspect to it. If I am part of the Debian community um, and I'm working on Debian, I know that my needs and concerns are going to be one of the factors. It's not something where my contributions will be accepted as long as they're consistent with someone's commercial agenda. Um, but whenever you know that this the person who owns the whole thing, their needs diverge from mine. Uh, you know, I'm out on the street. Here, I know that. Well, I mean, maybe someday the community will disagree with me. That's okay. Uh, we're it's at least a community part process, and they understand that that disagreement has a cost. Absolutely. Take a couple more, just Matt, and then. So I, <coughs> I apologize in advance for a long answer, but <laughs> I, think, I, I think in order to. Okay, we postponed <laughs> that to the question <laughs> time. <laughs> but I think in order to answer this question, you have to think about what uh, what Debian is and what it's for as well. And I think this is not a trivial question. Um, and I think there are at least a, a few different angles to look at this question from. Um, Debian is it's a it's an operating system that people use directly, and uh, as uh, as has been said, it works very well for for a lot of people. Um, it's also a platform for developers to use to make things, whether that's a, a derivative distribution or you know, an embedded system or lots of different things. Um, and it's also a project. It's sort of, you know, it's an activity that people do. Uh, and I think in each of those dimensions, Debian is uh, actually doing very well. Um, as a platform, you know, the, the extent to which other products are based on it is, is proof of that. Um, and in terms of a project, you know, Debian's an incredibly vibrant community. It's very rewarding to contribute to and continues to, to attract contributors. Um, so I think yes. Okay, thanks. Take one more. I, I, I think um, there all these answers are great, um, but for me, the underrepresented, really critical element in, in Debian is, unlike any other distribution, it's the uh, commercial or Linux, it's the only one that has maintainability through release after release after release. I call it eternally regenerative software administration. It is so awesome. And I, I think I think we should remember that and, and acknowledge it more often because the others that everyone mentioned seem to be the ones that people think of first. But for me, it's always the regenerativity. And Thank you. Uh, so, uh, OK. Just one more there, and then we I'll, we postpone the, the the remaining for the question time. Um, just a brief one. Uh, first of all, we set standards, standards in, ter in terms of documentation, which uh, documented standards which don't stink. They get updated. It's not that we drag for 50, 17 years original documents which still <laughs> in that shape, right? So, and that's important. Okay, thank you. So. I'm glad to have had this small question time because basically you have done the talk for me. But not entirely. I have some answers which have not appeared yet and I just go to, I would just like to go through them briefly. So one of the first reasons why I think Debian is better is because it has a focus on quality which is not there in all our distribution out there. So we have, as someone already said, 
package maintainers, which are experts of the software they package. This, interestingly enough, was one of the initial goals set by Ian Murdoch. So in Debian, unlike some other distribution, if you are a maintainer for a package, you most likely know this software. You, you, not, you do not know only the packaging aspect, but you know the software. And that makes you, that puts you in a better position to, to fix the software, and more importantly, to contribute back your work upstream to, the, uh, to contribute to the free software world in general. A second reason why I think we have an important focus on quality is that we don't have any second class packages. So in principle, all packages in the Debian archive are subject to the same quality constraint and to the same quality requirements. That's not always true in practice because we know we have orphan packages, but the goal we set for all packages, it is the same. Third point, our motto, we release when it's ready, which is something which makes us release slower than other, but still it means that for us, the quality of the packages is not something that we are, we are ready to trade with some specific deadline or with some, with some specific external requirement. And this is something quite peculiar in the, uh, in the context of distribution nowadays. And I think that our users are very well aware of that. So this is just a couple of recent feedback I got uh, after becoming DPL, talking with big companies, talking with part of the government which want to uh, switch to the free software. I got feedback like, we chose Debian because we need to rebuild packages, because we need to change them, and that's actually the essence of free software. And Debian is the only one where we find packages that do not fail to build from sources constantly. And this for them was really important. And the second piece of feedback that I get is something like, we chose that distribution, Debian Base, which is a commercial distribution because we need some commercial guarantees, but we chose that and not another commercial distribution because we trust Debian packages. And we know they're based on Debian packages, so we chose that instead of that other. Um, more generally, there are lots of technical reasons for which people prefer Debian, so I made a quick experiment on Identica. I kind of put out a, put out a, me a meme saying, why do you think Debian is better than others? And I got thousands of technical reasons, number of ports, stabilities, it's run anywhere, people like the testing suite, uh, the policy, it's huge, we have a lot of packages, and there are a lot of technical reasons we, we might agree upon. So, but I don't think these are the, actually the most important parts of Debian. I think there are some more profound philosophical reasons for which Debian is relevant in the free software world of today. So the first one is how much we care about freedom. So Debian is, is based on some firm principles which uh, bound, bind together users and developers by the mean of social contract. So we, put, we, we write down very clearly what are our goals, what are our what are our commitments, and we, uh, we bound our, ourselves to respect them in front of the users. Uh, in essence, that does mean that we have been promoting the culture of free software since 1993, and that we have users which are aware of that. Users trust our choices in terms of free software, and believe that our choices are for the greater good of free software. Second point about, free, of about freedom is that I like to think of Debian as something, as a distribution which is free the bottom up. What does it mean? That means that we are free in the software we distribute, and that's starting from squeeze will be including firmware, finally, no GR for deciding that firmware is an exception at the last minute, thanks to the amazing, world of the amazing work of the kernel team. But also it means that we are free in our infrastructure. We do not have any Nobody in Debian would accept to propose non-free services that developers have to use to do their packaging work, and nobody will accept among our users to have to use some non-free web services some kind of, in a way that integrates with the distribution. So we really did a good job in pushing the culture of free software, and our users are very well aware of that. Second point, still on the philosophical level, is that we are independent. So in the, in the, in the so-called blogosphere, there have been a lot of discussion recently uh, distinguishing corporate from non-corporate distribution. And Debian is a, in an independent distribution. What does it mean? That means that there is no single company which is behind us, which gives us infrastructure, which gives us money, which gives us hardware. We, we live up on the donation of a lot of companies, but a lot of individuals that gives us money and hardware, and besides that, we only have a gift economy. And that puts us in a in the relatively independent position from uh, money and from choices which comes from corporations. And people trust that our choices are not kind of driven by commercial needs, by money needs. Third and last point on the philosophical level is that Debian is better in decision making. Now, I understand that we do not all agree that we are kind of completely okay at taking decisions, but at least on paper, we are quite good at that. So, if you look at our constitution, <laughs> 
it's a, if you look at our constitution, there are two very clearly pr clear principles. The first one is, is what I call duocracy, even if it's not called that way in the constitution. And essentially, it says that anyone which is working on a specific task, and it is in charge to work on a specific task, it's free to take any decision regarding his own work. So if you're a package maintainer, you are fully entitled to take all decisions on that package, and either if they are technical or if they are non-technical. So second point, democracy. So we have democracy as the default, so decisions are taken by who, makes, who, do, who do the job, and when that does not work, or when we do want to override the democracy, we have a completely democratic process in which collectively we can take any kind of decision affecting the project. Uh, mm, taken together, these two points mean that reputation in Debian follows work, and that we don't have any benevolent dictator, we don't have any oligarchy. Some people claim we do not have any cabal too. And essentially, that means that we have no decision which are imposed from the outside. The decisions are all our fault if we do something wrong, and all our merit if we do something good. Okay, so this for me is what defines the specific role of Debian in the distribution ecosystem of today. And that for me also means that we have a kind of responsibility. So we have the responsibility to ensure that Debian shall live long and prosper. Because if we, one day to the other, we disappear, the free software world, I think, will suffer from our absence. So what should we do to ensure that Debian will live long and prosper? Well, we should fix some problem that we do have in our project. Um, there are various, I, I, I thought that how to list the problem we have. There are various possibilities to do that. The way I chose to do that in this talk is to start from the lack of manpower. So the lack of manpower is something that if you ask any team in Debian what is their problem, they will, one of the things they will surely say, they will say, okay, we don't have, any, we don't have enough manpower. We need more manpower, okay? Uh, and we are starting to, I think, believe that that's why other people do things better than us, because they have more manpower than we do. So I ask myself, is it really the case? And my answer is twofold. Well, it is surely the case. So we could definitely use more manpower basically everywhere in Debian. Nevertheless, we should also put into better use the manpower that we do have and, in, and which in some way we tend to waste. So I, I go briefly about uh, how I think we should put into better use the manpower we have. And a first way to do that is to change our culture with respect to releases. So right now, we have the, a kind of culture in which releasing is the job of the release team and of a few people which do NMUs. And that is something we, should, we, sh we really need to change because if we cannot go on and release that way for much longer. We need to realize that releasing is a shared responsibility. So as a package maintainer, your first task is to ensure that your package is in good shape and that it has no RC bugs and it, that in generally follow all the guidelines for packaging we have in Debian. But when you are done with that, it's, it is also your responsibility to ensure that other packages in the archive have no RC bugs. Because it's not tenable that only the release team should care about fixing the RC bugs in 30,000 packages in the archive. That simply does, do, does not work. And the way to go forward and uh, relax and change this belief is simply to use NMUs more. Do NMUs, welcome NMUs. So my Personal experience is what the initiative I call the RCBW, Release Critical Bug of the Week. I just tried to do one NMU, one NMU per, mm, per day, but the point was not really the ratio, and the point was not even fixing as many RC bugs as possible. The point was experimenting with how much people welcome or don't welcome NMUs, and I was impressed by the result. So I did something like 180 NMUs, and I got no complaint, Nobody complained about a single NMU, although I got a couple of, of um, override of uploads. And I get a lot, a lot, a lot of thank you messages. So that is impressive for me because I've always thought that we are kind of um, too attached to our packages. We kind of do not like when someone NMU a package of us, or, um, a package of yours. And I was really impressed to see that actually people welcome that. That people see that you are trying to help their work when they are overworked and they don't have time to fix a specific issue. And even more importantly, we had a buff on this topic yesterday. And everyone who participated in this buff agreed 
with this interpretation. So anyone which was at the buff and which has done NMUs reported the same experience. People do welcome NMUs. So if we, we should start using NMUs as a way to collaborate, and that's, I think, it's the first step to release in a more shared way. Second way to use better the manpower that we do have is taking responsibility. So lack of manpower is something that I've been hearing whining about in, in volunteering everywhere. So when I've been doing volunteering, even in uh, I mean non-computer uh, related stuff, everyone cries for the lack of manpower. But we have an advantage with respect to other volunteering realities. We have computers, we are geeks, we are hackers, and with computers, a single motivated individual can do wonder. So if you take one person which is um, motivated and capable, in one night of hacking can solve a longer standing problem which is in Debian. So, I know that it's easier to rant on list about core teams which are, doing, which are not doing their job properly, but it's, even if it's more difficult, it is more and more productive to actually uh, propose yourself to join that team. I don't have the feeling that it, we are anymore at the point where core teams are closed entities which do not accept, pack, which do not accept members. Uh, what I do see is rather a lot of core teams or non-core teams looking for volunteers and not finding volunteers. So think about it. Try to say, OK, I'm ready to um, do this experiment. I want to be part of that team. And just show that you are capable of doing the job. We really, you really can. And if you look in some of the uh, core teams in Debian, you will find out that we have some relatively young DD who joined some important teams and started doing some wonderful job there. And that's something you can do too. We all can do that. Third and last point about using, in a better way, the manpower we do have is trying to reduce the inertia of the project. So folklore says that large changes are impossible in Debian, that we have too much inertia on how we take decisions. And this is true when you look from the outside, but it's something that is easy changeable. It is enough to realize that in a project as big as Debian, you simply will never have um, unanimity. In a project with 1,000 developers, and in which the Debian Devel mailing list is open for posting to anyone out there in the world which wants to say his opinion on Debian, you will never have unanimity. So looking for consensus is good when you're doing a big change which can affect a lot of packages, but don't hope to have unanimity because we will never have that on any single subject. One of the most funny questions I've been asked in the first interviews after becoming DPL it was something like, okay, how do you think about uh, being the DPL in a project which have uh, 1,000 developers and 10,000 opinions? <laughs> okay, this is true. So that simply means that we will never have unanimity. So look for consensus, but at some point, it is the one who is ready to do the job which gets to decide. So if I can, like paraphrasing Linus, we, I would like to say, talk is cheap, show me, show me the NMUs. You, we discuss, we, we find our way, um, decision which is kind of prominent, and someone has just to start doing the job. And so this is, this is it for what concerns using better than manpower we, we do have. And if I had to summarize it, I would use this quote from Sam, Debcom 7, which said, be bold. Honestly, what can't you undo? And this is true, we have computers. If you do mistake, most of them, we can undo them. So it just takes you to go ahead and do the work. Okay, so this is what, what I had to say about using better what we have. So how do we reach out to find more manpower? So a first way to, uh, to have more manpower is to be able to retain the offer of help that we get. And for that, it's mm, very, very much needed to have a welcoming community. So uh, look at what has DistroWatch to say about Debian. You will find something like discussions on developer mailing lists and blogs can be uncultured at times. Uh, and it is folklore that to join Debian, you need to grow a thick skin. So you need to be able to withstand steps from people which are not related to your technical work. You need to be able to withstand a community in which people are grumpy, in which people hardly acknowledge the good you did and just look at the bad you did. People fail, sometimes fail to give credit. People rarely thank other people. We see insults on mailing lists sometimes. So this is, something, this, this is simply not acceptable. Not because we want to have a happy family, but because this way we are losing manpower. Every time you do one of these things, you are probably killing a potential contributor. Maybe not the one to which you are applying, but someone else which is lurking, which is looking at the exchange on the mailing list, and thinks, you know what? I don't think I want to be part of this. So 
I simply don't buy the argument that the requirement of having a thick skin is a guarantee of hacking abilities. It is not. It is just a requirement of having something which has a thick skin and which will probably perpetuate the need of having a thick skin to stay in Debian. So for me, the requirement of having a thick skin is just a way to lose potential contributors. <laughs> So another way to get more, mem more manpower is getting more users. So recently I've been reading on mailing list arguments like we don't need more users. We don't need more bug reports. We just want full-grown experts DD from day one. OK, the last one is it's for me. <laughs> but that's not the way it works in free software. For free software for me is participation. And participation starts with some initial involvement. And involvement is something that grows bit by bit, starting from the first bug report. So if we want to have more manpower, we should be also be more welcoming to noobs. That doesn't mean that we should accept bogus bug report, but we need which should be kind of tolerant from people which are starting and which potentially can become some very valuable Debian hacker, like one year later. As a bonus point on this, we want to be the universal operating system. Well, the universal operating system has users everywhere, everywhere of every kind. Okay. Last point on how to get more manpower for me is working more with derivatives. So we, we, we saw that we have kind of more than 100 derivatives out there. Some of them as more than 10 times the user base of Debian. And in an ideal free software world, that means that every contributor of a derivative distribution is also a Debian contributor. But in that ideal free software world, we also have that every Debian patch is pushed upstream. So I think we agree that not every Debian there any sorry I think that we agree that it is not yet the case that every contributor derivative is all every derivative contributor is also a contributor of Debian because sometimes the work uh, doesn't get forwarded to us but it's also the case that it is not true that everything we do in Debian gets forwarded upstream so I think we should work better in both ways and as a first way to do that I've tried to reaching out about derivatives and explaining to them what we do. And I was impressed by the result. People in derivative distribution care about Debian, care about our free software principle, and are simply kind of scared of us. So it's just enough to show, really. I mean, I get reply like, are you sure you want us to work for you? So it, it is really easy, just a, way to, just a way to go there and get other people know you. And as a first step, I'm very happy to of the initiative of the Derivatives Front Desk, which has started recently. For the moment, it has a wiki page and a couple of contact points. And that is the contact point you can give to any developer of a Debian-based distribution for if he wants to contribute his work back to Debian. So this is the place where they can reach out, reach out to us and say, OK, I have this kind of work. I would like it to be in Debian, because I care in free software and how it works. How can I do to put into Debian? Who should I contact? So if you want to join this list, this is a place where we can really attract more manpower from our derivative distribution and improving the way patches flows between us and them. OK, so this was it on, let's say, some of the outstanding problems that I see in Debian. I just have a couple of uh, final slides to throw out some discussion subject that we'd like to discuss with you later on. So, the first potential direction I think we should, we should think about is, the, is quality. So Debian started, started with, uh, with the focus on quality. It still has a focus on quality, but we can't be happy for the status quo. Quality doesn't wait for us. So other people are starting to focus more and more on quality. Lucas does not only rebuild packages for Debian, it rebuilds packages also for other distribution. So we cannot hope to have, uh, to have enough quality just because we care about FTBFS. Quality is something we should try to get more and more every day. And the potential direction in that is having more testing. And with, <laughs> but with testing here, I do not mean only the PU part stuff. So not only on the package itself, but also in the software. So having more unit test suites for the software we package, and suites which are not only runnable at the end of the build process, but we should be able to find a way to test packages as, are, as they are used by users. 
So some time ago, we had some proposal to do that in DPKG, but that's, some, that's really a direction we should take. And that ultimately will mean, will mean more RC bugs and more RC bug fixing. So second potential direction. Uh, so Joy will probably kill me for this slide. So I think it's the time to start having a serious discussion about a proposal called CAT. And the reason is that it is a fact that we have a lot of users which do love our release cycle, but it is also a fact that some users don't. And as a consequence of these two, we have a lot of users which are using the testing distribution, which initially was not meant to be used by users, but in fact, it's something which is really peculiar. It's something that it is not there in any other distribution out there. It is a mix of recent software and tested packages, which is really, really peculiar. So the question is, do we need or want to bless that suite? I'm not saying we do. I'm saying that we need to discuss that, because it's a potential improvement of Debian, which will be quite peculiar and quite um, interesting for a lot of users out there. So if you're interested in that, here is a proposal of Joy. There will be a buff here, but the timing, the timing is completely wrong, so Daniel would say when it is the actual buff. Yeah, uh, the actual buff is at uh, 6, which is Friday at 5 p.m. in Interschool. Thanks. So the buff will be actually, we change it because people which are not at the conference would like to participate and there will be so video streaming, which is not possible to have in this room. Final slide on another direction I think we should take is to welcome more non-package, non-developer project members. So this is a quote from my platform. It's, it's there just because a lot of people seem to have liked it. And it says, the best operating system is mainly, but not only made of software. It is also made of translations, graphics, music, etc., etc., etc. So what? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, documentation is software. <laughs> okay. So it, it is made by a, a more varied kind of software than what we take today. So we are already benefiting from a lot of work of these people. We have a lot of people working on some ancillary part around the Debian operating system. Also people doing marketing, which is hardly software. Uh -huh, I found one. <laughs> So we are already benefiting from work of these people, and I think we should reward them more. So something which is kind of very hard to do, because it, it is hard to mix it properly with the, the duocracy, which is at the basis of Debian, but we need to think about how to have project members which are non-packages. So that's it for me, and I would like to hear your thoughts on all this matter. Thanks. <laughs> Are you going to argue that marketing is software? No, no, that, no, that, not that. Um, allow me just for a second to stick my neck out and, and put together a straw man for you. One of your arguments up there was that in order to um, get more manpower, we need to have more users because developers don't start out as full-blown developers. They start out as users and, and progress and gain skills. Um, now, you also point out that there are derivatives of Debian today that have 10 times as many users as Debian. and I've observed the trend that a number of people who start out as users of those derivatives go on to become developers in those derivatives and then move on as well to be contributors in Debian as well. When you couple this with the fact that um, Debian today does not have the infrastructure to accommodate orders of magnitude more bug reports from users sent to our BTS, does it make sense to offload that particular task to the derivatives, or is it something that Debian should focus on directly? Okay, that's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting question. So let me point out that what you said in the beginning, it's already happening. So for instance, we already have an uh, important flow of developers in Debian which came from Ubuntu. We have, they started to um, know Ubuntu, they became user of Ubuntu, developer of Ubuntu. I believe at some point they become more interested in the relation between Ubuntu and Debian, and they can end up being developers in Debian. So this is a service which derivatives, and for sure Ubuntu is the, the most important one among them in that respect, it's, it's, also offering this, it's already offering this service to Debian. 
So I don't think we should have as a goal to offload users to derivative distribution. I mean, if it happens, okay. But I don't think we should abide to our, we should um, reject our responsibility of having direct users for this reason. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I, so you talked about teams needing manpower and every team wishing for more teams wishing for more members, but not having volunteers. I haven't looked at the whole DevCon schedule yet, but is there somewhere where teams can come up in front of us and say, "I want help. Uh, it's really not that hard to join us. Please join me," and where we can hear about all the work, all the teams that need people. So I smell like this is kind of a subliminal advertisement of Open Hatch, right? No. <laughs> So, yes, I completely agree, and I think we are... So another argument to get more manpower is surely communicate better. So communicate better not only in what we are, because uh, I don't think we are doing a, yet a particularly good job in pushing out our values, and, but we, we are, I think we are improving significantly, but also communicate more about what we need. And in fact, I think it's a kind of a meta problem. So because we also need in Debian people which is able to do this kind of communication, and I don't think we have much of those people in Debian yet. So there is a kind of a chicken and egg problem in that. Sorry? He volunteers to do it. Talk with him afterwards. Okay, <laughs> I do. There is a question here from Matt. Hi, I'm Matt. <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Matt Zimmerman. Um, I, I had a comment on releasing when it's ready. Um, I think uh, I think it's a great ideal for Debian to have, and you know, it's not right for, for every project, not right for every user, but having that, that option and having a project that's standing up for that, I think is a great thing for free software. Um, I think, though, that when we talk about releasing when Debian is ready, uh, we could do a better job of what, of defining what that means. You know, when, it, when is Debian ready? We say it's ready when, when there aren't any RC bugs, for example. So when no packages are you know, flawed in a fundamental way. Um, and I think that's a little bit, um, it's looking at a little bit in the wrong direction. Uh, and rather, you know, it should be considered ready when Debian is you know, suitable to be used for its intended purpose. It should be defined in terms of what you can do with it. You know, Debian is ready when you can do all of these things with it. It's more of a user-centric definition rather than saying you know, it's ready based on a mathematical formula of how many bugs there are. Um, so I think by turning that around, uh, we could change the dynamic of releasing when it's ready. It wouldn't seem quite as, uh, as cumbersome as it is if it meant something more specific. Yeah, so I have the impression that, yeah, you, I mean, you are right. It seems something cumbersome at the moment, something difficult to achieve. It can be defined in other ways, but I have the impression that the one you suggested are a bit more blurry. So you will then need someone deciding whether you have met the criteria you put forward, and that is... <laughs> on paper. <laughs> so, right, go ahead. Yeah, um, I th I'm uh, someone that has used Debian for quite a while, and I uh, do develop open source software. I've never participated. And I think one thing that would greatly um, increase participation is a hello world. Uh, if Debian had the equivalent of a hello world for participation, in terms of, okay, let's say that you want to create your own binary package or your own source package and just have a path. Do this, do this, do this, all the way to here is the joke package, you know, that actually makes it up and you can actually see your joke package. Like w with Wikipedia, you know, there's very little barrier to entry. You can just do your yeah. thing and oh my god, you're live. Like you can see it right there and it's very exciting. Um, if there were a way to go all the way from start to finish with a pretty well paved path, um, where it's not like, well, go to the, you know, get a mentor. Well, geez, what's a mentor? Now I've got to join that. Now I've got to do this. And here's the file system hierarchy sprawling document. Here's the, you know, it gets exhausting. So if there were a nice, cleaner way to do that, then it would, hello world is good. So just, just a comment on that. I think we do, a, we, you used to have a hello package. I have no idea if it exists any longer. But, okay. And beside that, so, what is really good is a, a packaging guide, which comes from Ubuntu, actually, and which we have been discussing on the Debian derivatives mailing list to promote as a more general, like, uh, Debian derivative packaging guide. And that's kind of good. And I've heard that there are also work in, pro in progress at this conference to actually improve the, the, our current packaging document. I think what we need is 
kind of the experience of someone outside. Because we are all people that know how to do the packaging, so we are not any longer really good at looking if a document for beginning packaging from scratch is good or not. So this is something that, for instance, something, someone like you can, could contribute to. So letting us know whether what we have right now is good or not and how to improve it. So I've, I've got the five minute sign. Anything else? Steve? Hi. Um, yeah, Steve McIntyre. Um, just a quick question, I guess, not so much for you, Zach, but for the rest of the audience. Can we have a quick show of hands? Who's at the first DevConf this year? Wow. wow. <laughs> and how many people do we have here who are just going through new maintainer or just become new, new Debian developers or Debian maintainers? Cool. <laughs> Okay, thanks for coming along and volunteering. Um, really, uh, echoing what Zach was saying earlier, I said something about this last year as well. Please, don't be scared of getting involved in these, in these scary core teams. There's lots of people out there who would love to talk to you, would love to share beer with you, and have, th and, and have you help them with their work. Um, don't be intimidated. There's lots and lots of cool stuff that you can do to make a difference. Yeah. Thanks for this comment, Steve. There's one question here. I believe it will be the last one. Hi, I'm C CJ. Um, in addition to more manpower, we need a lot more women power. <laughs> <laughs> so just in case, that was not a sexist remark. It's the English word for <laughs> available power. <laughs> So thank you, enjoy that conference.